Hello everyone, welcome back to E3 Brief. I think uh, this episode is going to be really jam-packed with hopefully some great information uh, for a lot of reefers out there. Um, you know, hopefully if you are new in the hobby, you're going to probably get a different glimpse. You're going to think of uh, this specific thing that we're going to cover a little bit differently and hopefully uh, it will get your attention and, you know, teach you to kind of pay a little bit more attention to it than probably you already do. So if you guys are wondering what exactly we're going to be covering today, it's going to be flow. So flow, as you guys are aware, especially you guys that have been in the hobby for a while, you're going to know that it's a, it's a very important um, aspect of our reef tank. It's very difficult to have a successful reef tank without, you know, stability, uh, without lighting, without flow. And one thing in this hobby that you'll quickly learn is that you have to have a mixture of all, you know, of those things I mentioned and a few others uh, perfectly in balance. Um, it's very hard or impossible to have, you know, horrible parameters in great flow. Um, you're just not going to have a, a great reef tank. Same thing, you can have great parameters but horrible flow and you'll probably have an okay reef tank. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's really not going to be, you know, what you're looking for. So like I said, given um, there's other things that are very important um, aside from just flow. This video here is just going to be talking about flow. Um, obviously, there's lighting. Uh, there's water parameters, there's what you feed them, uh, supplements, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so, you know, I don't want you guys, specifically you newer guys, to listen to this and, you know, specifically narrow down on flow. Um, just understand once you have stable parameters, once you have good lighting, uh, flow is something uh, that you may want to be paying attention to. Uh, obviously, in no real specific order, uh, but typically you're always trying to shoot for stable water parameters first. Uh, then lighting and flow and feeding and so on and so forth. So in this video, we're going to be digging a little bit deeper than probably a lot of you guys understand flow. Um, I know a lot of people, specifically newer people in the hobby, they tend to overlook this uh, quite a bit. Um, I think hopefully today, once we dig a little bit deeper and give you more of an understanding of what flows does in our reef tank, hopefully it'll you know, give you a different inside look, a different way to look at it. So in today's video, guys, like I mentioned, I don't want, I don't want to go too deep into it, but I certainly want to teach you guys a little bit more um, about flow. And a lot of this has been based off what I've learned in almost going on two years I've been um, in the hobby. And I've quickly learned the differences of flow. For you guys that have been following me for, from the very beginning, you've probably noticed my tank in probably the past seven, eight months, I completely changed my flow on it. So for you guys that haven't been following me for that long, uh, you know, when I first started my tank, I started with a gyre. I think it was a gyre 230. So it was the second generation of the lower model they make. And I ran that for about a year. And I always noticed I, I had a very hard time with um, Acans, uh, Euphilia, Ganapora, you know, just more meaty corals that, that aren't uh, too savvy about super high flow. And I always wondered what it was. I always thought it was my numbers and I just never could nail it. So talking to a few guys, uh, experienced guys that have been in the hobby for a while, um, I would ask them and a lot of them would tell me turn on the flow. Well, the problem with the gyre, it makes great flow, but in a tank this small, um, it was just too much. Also, I think that the problem with, not the problem, but the problem I had with the gyre was it it made flow kind of in the same direction and never really varied for the coral so that just really made a constant uh, stream of water going in the same direction and really just didn't let the coral relax so uh, about like i said about six seven months ago i went ahead and i installed an mp10 uh, now the mp10 creates different flow it allows the coral to relax um, and then again sway with the, with the motion of the water um, and I immediately noticed my ACANs, and you guys can see here in the shots, my ACAN garden, these things are huge. Um, I noticed my uh, Ganaporas were doing a lot better. Uh, my Euphilia was doing better, getting more ex extension, so on and so forth. Now, given, I'm not trying to say that in every reef tank you want to have lower flow, um, but just having a different style flow and not direct flow. Uh, one thing we are going to be covering today is kind of what type of corals like what kind of flow uh, based on my experience with this reef tank so one of the first things i want to get out of the way is understanding flow 
So for you guys wondering, what exactly does Flo do in a reef tank? Well, some people think <laughs> all Flo's job is just to keep the coral swaying back and forth so it looks cool. Um, I mean, you know, that's kind of cool and all. But the main, not the main, but one of the biggest parts of Flo and what it does, um, obviously it moves oxygen through the water. So it helps a fish. Uh, the fish not so much because a fish can swim. Uh, so they can move oxygen through their gills in that form. Um, but given, it does keep the water oxygenated. But imagine a coral that can't move. It's, you know, situated in one spot. It needs, you know, constant fresh oxygen uh, to keep the coral very happy, very healthy. Another thing and probably one of the most important things a flow does in a reef tank, um, specifically for our coral, it gives them nutrients. So as we all know, corals grab uh, stuff from the water column, plankton, you know, small uh, little particles flying in there. And just imagine if there was no flow in the reef tank, it'd be impossible for them to feed. Um, not to mention there's certain types of corals that use flow uh, to stay upright, like Kenya trees um, le or leather coral. Uh, they are very dependent on flow because they use it again to stay upright. So one of the biggest things flow does in the reef, it, it allows for nutrients to get through the coral, um, really getting the calcium, the alkalinity, uh, the plankton, you know, the food particles, everything. Um, another thing flow also does in the reef tank, it expels bad stuff uh, from the coral. So in not in every case, but in most cases, it allows uh, detritus to not build up on it, algae to not build up on it. Uh, so it just really keeps the coral uh, healthy, and, you know, keeps it oxygenated and allows it to grab uh, food, obviously, so it can feed itself from the water column. So that's why it's very important we do have flow. Um, and one thing you're, you're going to notice is there's different pumps out there that deliver different types of flow. You know, the gyre des delivers a very laminar flow across the top of the water column. Um, MP10s will deliver kind of a wraparound flow. Um, I don't know if you guys, you know, if I'm losing you there. Um, but I, I'm just really happy with the type of flow uh, the MP10 has been delivering for my tank. And it's also very important that you know uh, what type of flow you know each corals like so here what I'm gonna do real quick is give you guys kind of a rundown of the different uh, you know types of corals and kind of what they're looking for so I think one of the easiest corals to address when it comes to flow is SPS um, I think SPS they're not too picky with it uh, they do like high flow but now when someone says high flow it doesn't mean you put the coral <laughs> right in front of the power head um, by high flow it likes high uh, indirect flow. I personally don't think any coral is going to like direct flow, um, you know, right in front of a, a, of a wave maker. Um, but, you know, specifically SPS, they love high flow. Uh, not only do they like high flow, but they like alternating high flow. Uh, so, you know, if you have a pump that's constantly going in one direction, although you'll probably have good success with the corals, uh, but the SPS likes, you know, for it to be in one direction and then maybe sway another direction. Uh, this really allows the coral uh, to really get great coloration, great growth, and just all in all be a healthy coral. Since we have um, high flow kind of out of the way with the SPS, um, I want to cover medium flow. So when it comes to medium flow, um, it's very broad and there's actually quite a few corals that will fall into this. Uh, so one of which is uh, zoanthids. I feel zoanthids uh, really love medium flow uh, versus low flow, specifically in my tank. Um, I've noticed better coloration, better growth. Why? Because uh, zoanthid is a type of coral that grabs, uh, it's kind of a filter feeder. So it grabs uh, the nutrients, the particles from the water, and this is what it feeds uh, feeds off of. Um, another one in the category of medium um, is going to be for sure hammers um, and for sure um, or pretty much all the euphilia. So when it comes to torches, hammers, frog spawns, all these like uh, medium flow. But when I say medium I think all these corals are going to benefit from an alternating medium. So not just constant flow in one direction, but really allowing the, uh, the coral to breathe. 
Um, so generally, again, this is what I found in my specific tank. Um, the Ganapora colony I have, you guys can see here, uh, these also kind of fall into the medium. Uh, you can get away with lower flow, but generally speaking, I've actually had really good results uh, keeping them um, in medium flow. So last on the list is going to be my low flow uh, coral. So when it comes to low flow, I've noticed uh, trumpets, these candy canes here do really good in low flow. Uh, mushrooms, really good in low flow, uh, pulsating zinnias, um, yeah, actually acans. The biggest thing that's gotten my acans the way they are and the color they are um, has been putting them in a low flow area. I've really noticed if you have them in too high flow area, uh, they'll be very stressed out, they'll be very closed, um, and you just won't get this, uh, this puffy look um, as you guys are seeing here. So, uh, generally speaking, that's kind of the medium to low flow given there's, a, I know, quite a few other corals that I probably didn't talk about. Um, but generally speaking, this should cover the broadband of corals that a lot of people tend to keep um, in the reef tank. Also, a part I wanted to cover um, that kind of ties into flow, you know, kind of indirectly, is going to be surface agitation. So as you guys can see here in this shot, surface agitation is just the water... Um, kind of rippling if you will you can see here a pretty good shot of that uh, now with some pumps this is pretty hard to achieve um, like the mp10 why because you really can't point it in any direction um, so typically with your overflows you can point the nozzles in a certain way where they allow this now getting surface ag agitation is really good why because it keeps the water um, oxygenated uh, so in some cases it'll help uh, control the ph uh, but more importantly, I think for me, it keeps the water well oxygenated. Um, not to mention, in some tanks with certain lights, it'll actually give it a little bit of a shimmer. Um, like I said, that's just uh, with some tanks, not all of them. So this is a, just something I quickly wanted to cover before uh, we wrapped up because it's kind of not really related to flow, um, but it helps your tank, I feel. Uh, surface agitation it keeps it um, a lot better oxygenated so guys i think we're gonna wrap this video up here i didn't want to make it too long because i know flow probably isn't uh you know too high on on, on your topic of uh, types of videos you want to hear um, but i did surely want to share my experiences and what i've had uh, with flow in my tank you guys can see here so i think the key point with flow is try to have uh, you know a moderate high flow uh, but never put a coral directly in front of it. Um, I don't think even SPS really care for it. I'm not saying there's not corals that will probably like it, but in my experiences, uh, generally no coral is going to like to be in front of it. Um, and more importantly, if you guys are wondering what program to run, yeah, let's say if you do have a, a wave maker, uh, try to run a pulsating mode. Even when I had the gyre, and now that I have the MP10, I always did a pulsating mode, I think from one to two seconds. So you don't want too much of a quick pulse, because uh, I feel the quick pulse doesn't allow for the coral uh, to really relax. Um, like some of the shots I showed you earlier with the Ganapora, uh, you want to make sure the coral has enough room to relax so it's not always in a constant uh, constant area of, of constant flow. Now given this is going to depend a lot on your aquascape uh, so I'm pretty sure there's going to be areas just in my aquascape that are very very low flow areas uh, but just you know kind of keep that in mind. So guys we're going to wrap this video up here Hopefully I did cover some pointers for you guys. I know uh, this has been a video that a few of you guys wanted me to talk to. So hopefully I was able to not bore you guys, um, give you guys some good information. And we're going to wrap this video up here, guys. Um, I really thank you guys for listening uh, to this hopefully great episode. Also, guys, I want to encourage you over to head over uh, to thereeftalk.com. I recently started doing a podcast. I'm actually on the fourth episode. Um, you know, go over. Take a listen. I'm going to have a link in the description below. Uh, you can listen to it on iTunes. You can listen to it on Android devices and as well um, just on the website if you don't have either uh, of those. So I'm going to have a link of that um, down in the description. Again, that's thereeftalk.com. And um, yeah, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. You know, down below, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what pump you're running and what settings you're running. Um, I think if you guys leave a comment there, we're going to be able to help out each other, especially newer people uh, that aren't, you know, really aware 
uh, one, what pump to run, um, or more importantly, what program to run. Uh, real, real quick, uh, the pumps I have run in the tank before I end this video, I've run a gyre. Um, a gyre is really good. MP10s are really good. Um, and I've also run the JBO. The only downside with the JBOs I've found is that they take a lot more maintenance as far as cleaning them. Uh, so if you got the money, MP10 is honestly my opinion on kind of the way to go. So thank you guys very much for listening. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.